सो नमस्कार सबसे पहले मैं वीसी मैडम की सराहना करूंगी उनका ओजस्वी भाषण कल जो मैंने सुना वो बहुत ही प्रभावित किया उसने मुझे और मैं पहले ही कहना चाहूंगी मैं उनके जैसा अच्छा बोल नहीं सकती <laughs> लेकिन शिव भी जो भी आ, मुझे आता है और जो भी मैंने अपनी जर्नी में सीखा है वो आपसे शेयर करूंगी सो आई एम वेरी प्रिवलेज टू हैव डॉक्टर उदय मैत्रा हियर बिकॉज ही हैज़ ऑलरेडी इंट्रोड्यूस द टॉपिक सो आई हैव टू स्पीक वेरी लिटल देन आई इन द ऑडियंस आई सी मोनिका who has actually invited me and given me this opportunity to be here so thank you so much monica i have my colleague dr sanjay batra and then pratima from iict i wish there were many more whom i knew but then when you start your journey it is actually as empty as this hall so you have scattered ideas but you really don't know how to start and where to start with so uh, i am feeling the same way when i started my journey and uh, i i think if i can have my first slide so you can go to the next one and i always also like to thank umesh ji for kind introduction and chairing this session so uh, can i go to the next okay okay let me i think i have to handle so this has been my favorite uh, slogan and by louis pasteur who said that chance only favors the prepared mind so this is actually is a very important thing for any researcher it is not only for me but i feel for everyone when you start in your journey you have to actually understand the area in which you are venturing if you do not understand then you are going to make lot of mistakes you will have lot of problems in actually convincing others that why you want to do it so when we say a uh, research uh, proposal writing one thing is that you have to be prepared you understand the area understand the gaps and then you have to convince the reviewers and the funding agency that why you should be funded now as has already been told by uh, uday ji that what is research and how do we define so there are de many many definitions and i will like to say that i will like to agree with some definitions here which i have taken from the um, literature that it is defined as the creation of new knowledge and use of existing knowledge that is why the word is research in a new and creative way so that you generate new concepts methodologies and better understanding so it is a systematic inquiry to describe explain predict and control the observed phenomena the purpose is therefore to find out what is known what is not and what can be developed further and it is a creative work everybody agrees whosoever is a researcher we all understand that it is a creative work but it has to be taken in a very systematic manner in order to increase the stock of knowledge including knowledge of human culture and society so so that we devise new applications better understanding and better predictions i have ta taken this example from apcam so uh, there are various people who are actually trying to write articles about it so why scientists do what they do so there are many options many reasons why they want to do it like some people want to serve good and bet and improve our society some actually want to explore the truth and understand and they want to understand first themselves and then want to others to understand this one can do science for finding solutions of the problems which are existing in the societies then there are various ways various and as it is very explained by spiritual leaders that you have to create your own path there is nothing like following somebody so you in science you have to actually make it a journey for yourself 
Once you are doing that journey, in the process, you join, like a lot of your students, colleagues join you, and then you try to attain. So it is a teamwork as well. So what is actually a driver here? Now, when we do science, it is our passion. We want to actually understand. Then uh, there, is a, um, there are a lot of challenges. But then yet, there is a lot of fun and enjoyment also. So what is exciting you? There are people who say that my publication excites me, or my patenting, uh, patents excite me. But I personally feel, and there are others who agree with me, that any positive or any exciting results actually give you maximum excitement. And if you are able to publish it well, it doubles your excitement. So there are various ways people actually explain this understanding of science in a very exciting manner, in a very, very interesting way. And then how are you face a lot of challenges. Because anything, when we are uh, listening to success stories, it is actually people do not discuss their fellows. But then it, there, it is also an arduous journey where you do fail and very often you fail. So, the, and yet, exciting results, successful experiments actually make you very happy. But there are biggest challenges are like how to do those experiments. So you need good people who agree with your idea, your, you need good students, your team, and how, like what will actually make you work you need all the facilities, or at least minimum facilities in your lab. So to generate that, what do you need? Initially, when you join any institution, you do get some seed grants. But then you have to convince the funders that yeah, this is my idea, and this is to be funded. So the biggest challenge is to generate good resource. And for that resource, you have to write the proposal or submit the proposals for funding, and that you have to do in a very convincing way. But yes, the maximum, like the what is the real driver is your curiosity. So it's not moving, I think, so. yeah. So what are the important tips? As I was insisting and telling you that it is actually the area of the research which you want to pursue. And that you have to do very, very carefully. Second thing is, when you join a workplace, if you have choices, then you think what you want to do and choose accordingly. You must worry that if you are joining a place, what sort of infrastructure is available or being offered by the uh, director or the BC or by the head of the department. Then you have to select your collaborator. Sometimes, like whatever you want to do, Actually, that sort of uh, support system might not be available in your own institution. Then you have to think of your collaborators. And that is also very important, because they are going to travel with you. They are going to join your journey. And how are they going to do this? It is important. So what you need, a good supporter, plus the, they must have some belief in you that, yes, you are going to do something good. Then be consistent. Like I have seen researchers, they want to do in one area. Then after two, three area, uh, years, they leave the area and start working in the something. So I personally feel that in the long run, they may not be, that may, may not be very paying. So please try to stick to your area. Even if you are failing initially, please don't leave the area. Like it should be a very well thought decision. Try to make very meticulous notes and maintain proper records. I think Pratma is going to deal with it because for a lot of ethical reasons, this becomes very important. And I personally believe that whenever I am working in a, uh, in an, a particular area or in a particular research area, and when I get results, I actually want to be a good critic of that. Because it is not that, that it is exciting you, yet you have to find faults that where my, uh, in my thought process, where could I have made mistake, or where my student could have an er done an error. And it is not deliberate, but sometimes it happens. So you have to be very, very critical of your results which you are getting. Try to prove them by using different methodologies. 
And if you are getting repeatedly that results, start your hypothesis at that place. So if you are starting your or initiating a hypothesis, you have to have actually very, very sure of your results. Then uh, stay updated. Sometimes people have one uh, result, they're very excited, but then it is also a reported uh, result. Then you have to really think that what next. As also worry about your mental as well as physical health, because that is very important to sustain you in the area for a very long time. Your presence should be in uh, social media, and then you have to be really in touch with your peers. Remain young at heart, because if nothing is exciting you, it will not excite others. So that is also an important tip I want to give to youngsters. Now, uh, when you are thinking of a research problem, think of a specific issue, difficulties which you might uh, get encountered, then uh, the contradictions, and also the gap in knowledge that you will aim to address while you are taking up that area. Individual organization and collaborators are very, very important. The ecosystem, actually when we say, like uh, in US, maximum Nobel Prizes are going there. It is why it is happening. Because there is an ecosystem where, and that ecosystem actually thrives the research atmosphere. And when, like even uh, anybody will think get excited, feel very happy, and then you want to go to the places and you want to be very feel very, very enthusiastic about it. So you have to worry that am I, am I creating, am I contributing to this atmosphere? This is again a very important issue. If you become very, if you come to your workplace in a very gloomy mood, actually you are not going to excite even your colleague what to say about your students. So training and research Expertise is also important. So constantly update it. Try to attend many workshops. Try to uh, go to the labs where you can get updated your knowledge. So you need to have, like this is also very, very important. I have seen people that they were doing one sort of experiments and you meet them after 10 years, maybe they are doing the same experiment with different sets of compounds. Like I say, uh, we receive uh, in a, uh, like we sit in uh, funding agencies and are participating in the review process. In drug discovery, which Dr. Uday Mehta was actually mentioning yesterday, there are a lot of proposals which you see which are mentioning only about formulation. So today you have one formulation, another day you are going to have another formulation, and then and you are repeatedly doing the same experiments. Please don't do that, because that is not a good research. So I am trying to say that what makes good research, and if it is good research, naturally you get success in funding also. So now you see that these are the 10 important discoveries which have been made from in last 10 years. So if you, sorry, I cannot move. And uh, if you see, like there are these t t 10 important discoveries. And now in these discoveries, there is one striking point. Like even if we say that there is one observation, say uh, from crispus cas So do you think that it has been done in one year or two year or three year? No, it takes a lot of time to reach and to mature that area and then make a discovery. So it is a consistent effort on the part of researchers who stick to the area and then they, they made these as discoveries. I would like to, like I, I, I think uh, these slides can be shared so you can have more reading about it because uh, I'm not going to take too much of description on this. The point here is that one has to be consistent to actually discover something or to make a path breaking science. For that purpose, you have you have to give a lot of time to your research. Then only you can do this. Like even understanding genomes, decoding them, uh, understanding the biology of a disease, or even in the technology, or reaching to the mass, they all take a lot of time and a lot of team effort. It is not an effort of a single person. 
Now in India, what sort of research we are expected to do? So there is a, uh, uh, this is a sustainable development goal by UN. And our Prime Minister uh, Maniniya Modi ji actually has adopted them. So there are important areas which can actually define research area for young faculty. If you align your research problems to these, some of these goals, you are going to really make a meaningful change. And this is what is needed. So like uh, as an early researcher, most of the times we make a mistake, I have heard PhD students telling me that this is my area of expertise. And I sometimes wonder this, because PhD is only for grooming of a researcher. Actually, you start thinking that how the research should be done. You understand the importance of methodologies, how methodologies have to be established. As I told you, if you have an observation, you have to confirm them by using multiple methodologies. So this is the grooming. Then you want how to write your research, how to communicate a publication. So these are the areas which are actually taught to you when you are doing a PhD. This is not a uh, time when you define your expertise. During even PDF, in postdoctoral fellows, also actually further get groomed for more mature thinking. So that is again important uh, exposure because during PhD, you are actually engrossed with multiple things. But now during your postdoctoral area, you actually try to understand a burden particular area, then how to contribute towards that. So when you join as a faculty, please don't take those areas of research in which you have done your PhD or in which you have done your PDF. <coughs> So excuse me, so actually I, what I want to say and my emphasis is that when, when you actually start some area as a faculty, try to align with your national needs or with the needs of the region in which you are working and then take up those areas. Try to identify gaps and then initiate the area. <coughs> so thinking about the challenges that need to be addressed, that is very, very important to define your research questions. So when you are writing a research proposal, there are set headings. So these have to be actually prepared very, very carefully. So object, in my opinion, I think uh, title emphasis has already been made by, my, by uh, Professor Uday. So I will say that objective is most important thing, because any reviewer, when they are going through the proposal, actually they read two things first, objective and the title. Is it correlating? Is it clear? Is it exciting? Or is it actually conveying the meaning of your research which you want to take? I have seen proposal in objective, they write methodology. They write their experiments, what they are going to do. So it is not a proper way of writing objectives. Then. Most of the researchers also make a mistake that they propose an experiment that they want to do. <coughs> in particular, like say in three years, they want to achieve something. But then they do not talk of any alternative strategy. So what if you fail in doing those experiments? Or you fail to get any convincing results out of those? So there has to be some alternative strategy where actually a reviewer feels convinced then a proper review of literature from the national and international perspective. A Lot of times we do see that we do know that there are people who are working in this area, but when researcher is actually emphasizing the national status, they miss those people. So that gives us an idea that they are not well-read researchers. So even if sometimes your objectives and things are good, but if you are not aware of what is happening in India, you will not be able to connect with them. <coughs> and if you're not able to connect, naturally your growth is not going to happen. <coughs> Sometimes even methodology details are very, very skeptical. <coughs> so that also needs very negative marking. And everything, 
थैंक यू सो मच आई जस्ट टेक वन कीप अप यू थैंक यू सो मच प्रतिमा सो इट इज ऑल्सो इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट यू चूज योर बेस्ट टीम बिकॉज एवरी थिंग नाउ इट इज इट इज एज आई वॉज टेलिंग यू दैट मल्टीपल मेथडोलॉजीज स्पेशली इन बायोलॉजी आर नीडेड सो यू डू नीड योर कोलेबरेटर्स मे बी इन फर्स्ट प्रपोजल यू डोंट नीड दैट बट इन सब्सिक्वेंट प्रपोजल्स यू विल नीड मल्टीपल पीपल द टाइम फैक्टर इज अगैन लाइक यू आर actually promising a moon but it is not possible to deliver moon in within 3 years so this is also important to be very very pragmatic on that then budget carefully sometimes people write in a very random manner so by looking at your methodology one can always connect whether your uh, expectation for funds is proper or not and do your background work about the funding agency as well so uh, hypothesis is important S make some predictions that whatever you are going to get what are you going to achieve then design an experiment or a study that will test your prediction so when you are writing your hypothesis you are saying that you are going to achieve this so is it that your experiment design is actually according to that then test the prediction by conducting experiments multiple using multiple methodologies and then report your outcome so actually uh, <clears throat> another very important thing is that where are you putting your proposal so actually successful research proposal targets the right funder as well sometimes we have prepared our proposal and we put change title little bit of other things and we put into multiple uh, agencies sometimes reviewers are common so if you you you, you will be very unlucky if you find that the same reviewer actually is uh, reviewing the proposal from different two agencies and they find out it is so so you are not likely to be get funded so that is again a mistake which is usually done by people don't do that so uh, actually this is important to understand that when they the funders are actually funding you or the funding agencies are funding you actually they are also creating their own data they also want to boast that whom they have funded and what has been achieved so if you understand this actually you will come up with the right proposal and you will also choose a right funder so familiarize yourself with the funding agencies where you want to put your then know your funder well what is their expectation then uh, familiarize yourself with their strategy their priority areas which they are thinking of funding and little bit understanding of the review process as well so the matrices and indicators can support your case this is an important area to understand and also about the research funding cycle so maybe when the financial is start in march and if you are putting your proposal according to that time there are better successes but if you are funding during a time when the fund propose like funding is going to get reduced or maybe the most of the funds are distributed again the chances of success will be less there so <clears throat> to understand the funding and the research i have taken it from the lc was site what you see is that what are the wants and needs so we all understand that we are using taxpayers and government money and this is being given to the funders and there is some, the when the money is being distributed every funder is get, given an objective to research the particular areas and then funders actually invite proposals then there is a peer review process so that review process again understand the strategy and accordingly what money and how much funds are sufficient accordingly that is distributed then it goes to research and universities and you need to actually contribute towards our country growth so we you have to have your funding or your research should be some useful should be useful to industry or to the basic understanding of the area so this is a cycle which is to be understood very well with every by everyone so 
This is important because funders want to have an excellent scientific portfolio. You must have heard the Monica's uh, um, presentation. There they, they project data which is processed and from the successful research proposals which they have funded. They identified good researchers and have more of trust and more faith in them. So this is also important. So what are the reasons of failures? Lot of the time we, we feel that, oh, my proposal was good, but I was not successful in getting fundings. So maybe because you have not rightly defined your objectives, there is no alternative strategy which has been given in the research proposal. There is a plagiarism issue. Like you have cut-pasted areas, like most of the times the reviews have these issues. Now agencies are also checking them. Then methodology sections are very sketchy. I had already emphasized on this point. Then note in line with the funding agency priority areas, like you are putting your proposal in a wrong, uh, uh, to wrong funder or wrong uh, areas for the funding. Then review of areas have obvious gaps. I had already emphasized that we have, like any reviewer do have an idea that what, who are the researchers in those areas. And if you are not citing them, obviously there are gaps. And experts are actually not convinced about the success of. So you have to convince, you have to write in a way that it, is a, it looks very, very convincing. So I, will, I thought that I will, it will be good because I cannot keep on harping on these issues. And I have been given 45 minutes to talk about. So I thought it will be a good idea to share some of our, my experiences, which I have with, during my research journey, as well as like the funders whom I became successful in receiving grants. So I was very lucky because I joined CSIR institution, and CSIR institutions had good amount of money to fund in those days. And by the way, good amount of money was that my first research grant as Scientist B was 10,000 rupees. So <laughs> don't think that we were given lakhs and crores. Then uh, my first grant came from DST. And that was around 10, 12 to 15 lakhs. DBT, it was not a starter grant, it was a regular DST grant. Then the uh, Department of Biotechnology, DBT Indigo Program, Ministry of Earth Sciences, and also SERB. So I will say that how I started my area, maybe it looks boring, but it is actually, under, it is good to know that when I joined the pharmacology division of Central Drug Research Institute, we have very, very less number of instruments for supporting a biochemist, because I am basically a biochemist. So uh, there was isolated organ bath, and isolated organ bath is an instrument where actually you can record the activity of the living tissue by keeping them in oxygenated or carbogen environment and keeping it in a buffer which is able to sustain the activity of those particular tissue. And then you record it by using, I don't know this, uh, uh, <coughs> this. can you see when I'm uh, putting a pointer? I think this pointer is not working. So uh, you record the activity on a smoke drum. So we used to smoke a drum put it and then record those activities. And that was the organ bath where we had in pharmacology division. And then we had an agrigometer. And I, my work of area in during my PhD was time was cardiac arrhythmias. So it, well, I was exposed to cardiovascular area as per some of the understanding. Then we thought of initiating an area in the thrombosis. And thrombosis is actually because of the platelet activation. So we had, because we had platelet aggregometer in, the, uh, in our uh, department, so I started working on platelets. So this was uh, something very exciting at that time when I observed that platelet aggregation in presence of neutrophils was getting inhibited. And this inhibition was actually uh, sensitive to NOS inhibitors, NO scavengers, and we could also estimate nitrite. So these were very simple experiments. And you'll be very uh, surprised to note that Fershkot, 
who got the Nobel Prize in the area of nitric oxide. Actually, his observation came from an isolated organ bath, where he used isolated aortic rings and proved that endothelium lining of the vessels actually release a factor which helps in the relaxation. So this is a very, very simple experiment. And if you read a lot of Nobleret, their preliminary observation, they're very simple observations. And that is, I, that is why I believe that chance favors the prepared mind. So if you have an observation and you persist on those, you are going, maybe you are not going to get a Nobel Prize, but at least you will have a very satisfying journey. Because one thing is, if you're not satisfied with your own job, there is no fun of getting awards, recognition, or anything, because they are all artificial. The best place is in being in your lab, interacting with your students, and come to know the exciting results which are happening in your lab. That is most important. So agrogometer works on a very, very simple uh, um, principle that is when a light is path passing through a path, if you have a uh, suspension of cells, there will be limited transmission of light. But if the suspension settles, the light, more light will travel. So you, you follow and observe platelet aggregation like this. And these were the um, records of those. And we noticed that when we collect uh, neutrophils from the animals in which we had introduced thrombosis, there is more nitric oxide is being generated by those neutrophils. And we got, uh, like, uh, we were lucky to get uh, successfully published this in a good journal. So please scan. So a little bit about neutrophils, that they are white, uh, white uh, blood cells. They are more in number relative, uh, in relation to lymphocytes. And they actually execute killing of the pathogens. But they are equally important in the inflammatory diseases. And they generate a lot of superoxide radicals. And then, uh, as I told you, we got this observation. It's can you go back? Yeah. So please move it. I think this is not working. If somebody can give me another one. So uh, mm -hmm. neutrophils generate a lot of uh, superoxide radicals, and they are very redox-sensitive uh, cells. But at that time, it was not known whether they also generate nitric oxide. So there were few reports, and we also started working in this area, because there were letter reports. We went to identify that which isoforms of nitric oxide synthase are actually responsible and how this enzymatic synthesis is happening in the cells. So it requires l arginine and oxygen. And there are several cofactors which are important. You measure them as nitrite or as the formation of citrulline because they are found, formed in an equimolar concentration. So we took research in three areas. First and simple thing, question came to our mind, if a cell is synthesizing something, if there is an autocrine and paracrine function, so how does it affect the cell itself? Then characterize the source of synthesis, that how it is synthesizing, understand better about those enzymatic processes. And then you also, because you want to give importance to this area, you want to know whether it is getting altered during pathological conditions or not. So luckily, because I was in Lucknow, there are several medical colleges, so I could do that work. So multiple methodology is emphasized here. We measured by using these uh, redox status, by using multiple methodologies. Then there was a convincing uh, outcome that yes, they get affected. Then we wanted to understand the mechanism, that how this is getting activated. So there is a defined molecular mechanism. We just went into that how we can add something more here and whether it is to explore whether something more is happening. And when we did this, we, we checked for glutathanolation. I'm, I'm taking it very quickly. So if it is not clear, maybe you can talk to me later, whosoever is in life sciences and want to understand. So glutathanation is happening actually on cysteine residues. We looked at the protein, whether there are cysteine residues or not. We uh, characterized them. 
and we showed that sustained redox change in the status is happening because of phosphorylation, which was already reported, but we found that glutathionylation is also happening. Can I go to next, please? How it is distributed? So uh, inducible nitric oxide synthase actually reaches to the phagosomes and helps in the microbial uh, activity. So we could show that in survival and apoptosis, there are different status and the level of nitric oxide is actually different in these cells. So as I am not going into this, we, we actually uh, studied a lot of different pathological conditions to show that yes, their status is changed. And in Parkinson's disease, actually, it is being considered to be taken as a peripheral marker. So what are the important tips? For my journey, when I chose this area, I did it very, very carefully. So it was a very careful decision to work in this area because there were gaps. Then uh, I, I did not choose my workplace, but yes, it is, uh, but actually I wanted to be in CDRI, this is true. So I succeeded in that. Then I chose my collaborators very carefully. You have to have a collaborator which has, who has scientific temper, who do not have ego issues, who do not negotiate that who will be what, and I want this and I want that. They are very accommodated uh, in uh, nature. Then often I have been very, very critical to my own research and then think about it that what next. I constantly worked towards und understanding and adapting newer techniques in my lab. It was never like same technique is being used. Then I, I always updated myself about the literature which is coming and getting published. There is a role of philosophy. You want to do something in a very, very great manner. But if you're not able to achieve, you have to maintain your passion, your enthusiasm. So for that, you have to read some philosophy as well in life. And that is very important thing when you are not successful, how to remain calm and be consistent, be perseverant. And there are a lot of people who will be your, who will be your real critics. So one has to be resilient. It is important to be resilient in your own area. It is not a gender specific thing. I always used to tell people, this is again one thing which I want to uh, share. Scientist is a neutral, uh, gender neutral world. There is a no gender defined to this. So I said, it is not important whether I am a woman or a man. It is science which is important. And science, if you do something, you will be remembered because of your work, not because of your gender. So this is also a very important lesson to, at least I, I thought always like this. Then uh, remain young at heart. So I still can say that if I get an exciting result, I still feel the same enthusiasm and same passion in me. And it, it, is, it always keeps you your uh, passion and you remain uh, very enthusiastic. So these are the list of agencies which actually helped me in doing whatever I could do. I have only shared the glimpses of the research which I did. And I told you that my first DST research grant was only 10 or 12 lakhs. And now with JC Bose Fellowship, I'm getting a substantial support. And there were several others which have given me very like good opportunities to interact, not only with the national people, national scientists, but also the international scientists. And this is the success story which I'm showing you. But there are a lot of failures, a lot of unsuccessful attempts of my research, which maybe I can share it in a personal discussion, because I, uh, and this is the outcome. And I'm very, very proud of my research students who got trained in my lab. And I could do a uh, lot of learning through them. So this is the journey where I became, like whatever, I, when I joined this uh, CDRI, I was not knowing so much. And still I'm not saying that I, have, I know a lot, but yes, I'm better informed person now. 
And apart from this work, I could actually work towards, again, a team effort where uh, a molecule has reached for the phase one clinical trial. Now Sanjay Batra is uh, looking after this project. I also work for the development of an LT ulcer compound and initiated new, new projects in the area of research where drug discovery can be very, very competitive. So uh, when you work, actually there are a lot of uh, people who actually help you, mentor you, and support you. So it is a, a small list here, but I'm telling you, there is a huge number of people who have supported me in many, many ways. And uh, with this, I want to thank you. And I hope, uh, Pratma, I'm in time. <laughs> so thank you so much. Maybe a few questions, one or two. No, 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 no. So can you give this to yes. yes. I do this. I uh, thank you, ma'am, for the session and for the wonderful talk. Now the session is open for the queries. Uh, hello, good morning, ma'am. I am Morning, ma'am. I am Dr. Rita Chikara from North Cap University, Gurgaon. Ma'am, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for such a lovely sh session. Thank you. Uh, you provided us great insight on how to write a wonderful research proposal and a successful resource research proposal as well. Uh, Ma'am, I have a question regarding the collaboration. Uh, like you mentioned that we need to uh, identify good collaborators. Uh, so, ma'am, uh, I have not been able to find any trustworthy website or a link where we can uh, establish or, you know, identify collaborators. So, if you could just uh, you know, tell us some th a few more things about how to go about it. So, thank you. So, I can tell you from my own example, at that time when we initiated uh, research, there was no Google facility, no website. <laughs> so, nothing was there. And it was uh, like... Uh, I used to go and visit doctors, clinicians, who were working, because I, as I told you, I was working in neutrophils, and they are very important cells for inflammation, inflammation as well, and for infection. So I used to visit regularly or call them for interactions or invite them for some meetings, and then discuss, and make them interested in I, my research. And for that, you have to be very enthusiastic, because this is a very consistent effort. Nobody agrees with one discussion. You have to really share some uh, publications, make and really convince them that why this research is important. What is new? Sometimes they snub you. No, no, nothing is there. This is not a low. Uh, uh, no, this is not a significant observation. I tell you, when I used to get neutrophil depletion, I used to tell people, and they used to snub me. No, it is not an important. But I kept on. I became, I am a very perseverant person, so there were few people who would get convinced. Like it is, it is impossible to talk to one and convince the same person and then agree to collaborate. But now uh, I think there will not be any website, but you can go to the website of the institutions and try to find out which type of research they are doing and then meet them. Personal interactions are very, very helpful. I hope I could answer. <laughs> Any, Any other? There is one more person. Yeah, please. Hello, ma'am. I'm Chandashi from Bangalore. It was a very nice session. Uh, I just wanted to ask you, once you told, like, uh, we should not uh, stick to our, uh, means whatever postdoc or PhD uh, topic we have or we had, uh, we should not stick to that. And uh, again, you told that we should not deviate from our areas in which we have done research. So will you please just explain like if both these statements, how we will move forward. If we get an opportunity to deviate from the uh, main area or core area in which we did the PhD, should we go take it or we should not? So actually what I mean is that you, whenever we do PhD or PDF, we are working on a particular aspect in that particular area. So if I did my PhD in cardiac arrhythmia, that is a 
cardiovascular area in general. And my contributions are in cardiovascular area. So that way, if you say, I did not leave the area. But I did not work in arrhythmias because I knew that all the facilities which are required to do good research are not existing in my department. So why to work in an area where you are not going to succeed or you are not going to get that much of excitement which you want to have? So think in this manner. And I'm saying that don't pursue the particular research area in which you did your PhD. Because you will always remain shadowed by your guide. Yes, true. They will always be ahead of you. So this is what I meant. OK. okay. Thank you, ma'am. There was one question here, I feel. You, no? Yeah, there is one. Uh, hello, ma'am. Uh, very nice presentation and sharing you. from you. My question is that you have mentioned that we should mention in writing the proposal the alternative strategy. So where should we write this? Because I think there is no separate heading in the format. So after objectives are in the methodology are some part in objectives and some part in methodology. So when uh, there, are, uh, there is an option while you are actually explaining the methodologies, there you can give this. And second thing is that you can mention this in, uh, in your summary proposal also. Another, there are few funding agencies which are actually asking this question. So, and that becomes very helpful in understanding that how this research will go about. So if you mention this, even if this is not a formal part, at least in life sciences, we want to look at it. Because in life sciences, there are many chances that whatever hypothesis you have may not work the way you want to your thinking. Uh, last question. Uh, we can interact with the tea break. OK? So, thank so you. I'm available here till evening, so don't worry. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. Yeah, you have this question, yeah? Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you for a wonderful talk and so many inspirational words. Uh, I'm, uh, my question is on the line, which one uh, previous question, and I also asked Pro Professor Metra. So you, you told that we should not stick to the previous PhD background. I totally agree. And we should, uh, we should, we should um, take the problem according to our workplace. So then if I write a proposal, what are the chances of getting the proposal? Because I do not have a complete expertise in that area which I'm choosing now. So I think it is the best way is to have some initial results. Like if you give some background results that this is your hypothesis and you are getting your results like this, so you are proposing this. That will be very convincing. 